Today is Friday, November 13th. What to know about President Trump's latest allegations of voter fraud, as his own administration's cybersecurity experts call the presidential election the most secure in U.S. history. Also, health departments around the country are prepping their vaccination plans. We'll tell you what to expect. Plus, another historic rocket launch from SpaceX. A throwback video game is making a comeback. And which pop star is headlining the next Super Bowl halftime show? Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. Top government officials came together to say they found no evidence of compromised or altered votes in the 2020 presidential election. In fact, a coalition called it the most secure election in American history. A high-ranking official at the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, or CISA, which is part of the Department of Homeland Security, leads the group that put out the statement, along with several other top federal and state election officials. They said, quote, While we know there are many unfounded claims and opportunities for misinformation about the process, we can assure you we have the utmost confidence in the security and integrity of our elections, and you should too. They cited paper records of each vote in states with close results, pre-election testing, certification of voting equipment, and more. Yes, the statement comes from cybersecurity experts within the Trump administration, but their take definitely differs from President Trump's. Remember, he's pursuing lawsuits in several swing states, accusing them of allowing voter fraud to push his opponent Joe Biden to a win. By the way, there's new data showing just how historic this election really was. The Washington Post reports more Americans cast ballots this year than they have in any election over the last century. We reported last week the vote count was on track to hit that number, and now it seems it's official, and all the votes are not even counted yet. So far, it looks like about 64 percent of eligible voters cast a ballot in last week's election. And in the swing states of Minnesota and Wisconsin, the turnout comes close to 80 percent. When all is said and done, election officials say they expect this year's turnout percentage to be the highest since the election of 1900. (music) President Trump won an election challenge in a Pennsylvania court, but it won't have much of an impact on the presidential race. At this point, Biden is still considered the winner of the state. This lawsuit was over ballots that were submitted on time but needed voters' proof of ID before being certified. Normally, voters have until November 9th to fix ID-related problems. The Pennsylvania Secretary of State pushed that deadline back a few days. The Trump campaign says she didn't have the power to do that, and yesterday a judge agreed. So any ballots that were not ready to go, ID and all, by November 9th will get tossed. But again, those ballots had already been set aside. They had not been counted when major news organizations called Pennsylvania for Biden, and they still have not been counted today. Still, the Trump campaign is celebrating the court win, with one lawyer saying it proves the Pennsylvania Secretary of State plays fast and loose with deadlines. And that could come up again since the Trump campaign has more legal challenges pending in the state. Today, Trump's lawyers have a hearing over thousands of ballots they say were improperly counted. On Twitter, President Trump has mentioned more than once that thousands of votes were stolen from him in Pennsylvania, Michigan, and other states. For example, he claims certain election technology software deleted or switched votes to count for Biden. Some pundits, like Fox News's Sean Hannity, are also reporting these claims. But organizations such as Edison Research, PolitiFact, the Associated Press, New York Times, and the CISA that we mentioned earlier are all saying these claims just are not true. An expert at a nonpartisan nonprofit that studies voting infrastructure told the AP a small handful of issues were a result of human error, not software, and still those issues would not impact the election results. Of course, we'll let you know about any new evidence if it comes out. Several more Republican senators are now pushing for President-elect Biden to get the access he needs to be prepared to run the country. The Wall Street Journal says reporters spoke to some key Trump allies about this, like Senators Chuck Grassley, Lindsey Graham, and Marco Rubio, to name a few. Now, most of them still said Trump is right to challenge election results in court, but they also said the Biden transition team should get White House resources, like access to classified briefings and federal funding. Separately, more than 160 former senior intelligence, military, and diplomatic officials who worked for both Democratic and Republican presidents sent a letter to the Trump administration. In it, they asked the White House to designate Biden the winner so everyone can move forward with the transition. And that group cited national security concerns as a reason. But remember, Biden says he will be moving forward with a transition with or without that added access. To be continued. New COVID-19 cases are on the rise in 46 out of 50 states. And overall, the U.S. is breaking records almost every day. So in response, several cities and states around the country are imposing tougher restrictions. 
Some of the strictest measures are now in Chicago. The city's mayor issued a 30-day stay-at-home advisory. She's asking people to only leave home for work, school, and essentials. And she says people should even avoid gathering with trusted friends and family outside of their own household. New York's governor had a similar message earlier this week, and he banned all indoor gatherings of 10 people or more. New measures were also introduced this week in Maryland, Minnesota, Iowa, Utah, New Jersey, and more. Others are threatening shutdowns if trends don't improve soon. The U.S. is gearing up for the biggest vaccination effort in American history. Remember, the first doses of a possible COVID-19 vaccine could be available as soon as next month, although that first batch would only go to the high-risk groups like healthcare workers. So in places like Philadelphia, the health department has started counting how many healthcare workers and others will be first in line. In Louisiana, officials have been playing out different scenarios. For example, they ask if we get 10,000 doses, what are we going to do versus 100,000 doses? The AP says similar preparations are happening on a federal level as well. And the CDC is working on a vaccine finder website to help people find doses in their area. State officials are also preparing systems to track supplies and patients. It's a little tricky because most of the leading vaccine candidates come in two doses that need to be given three to four weeks apart. So pharmacies, doctor's offices, and healthcare systems will need to be able to look up shot records. One more hurdle for state health departments, making sure doctor's offices and pharmacies have the storage capacity. The Pfizer vaccine, for example, needs to be kept at negative 94 degrees Fahrenheit. So public health groups have said around the country an extra $8.4 billion is needed for staff, data systems, and supply costs. Congress is still working on the next round of coronavirus economic relief, but it's not clear if vaccine preps are part of that discussion. Stay tuned. All right, we have more news coming up, but first a quick break because this episode is brought to you by HelloFresh. HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit, and it really does make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. HelloFresh cuts out stressful meal planning and grocery store trips so you can get dinner on the table in just about 30 minutes. And the meals are fantastic. HelloFresh delivers fresh, high-quality, pre-portioned ingredients so you can make meals that are delicious and nutritious. In fact, more than 90% of ingredients are sourced directly from growers to ensure peak flavor and ripeness. I'm always impressed with the seasonal recipes and the flavor of the meal. I recently made Italian garden veggie soup with kale, pearled couscous, and garlic bread. It would not be something my husband would typically go for, but we both loved it. I don't think we've ever had a meal from HelloFresh that we didn't like. And you have options when you sign up, like 20-minute meals, low-calorie, vegetarian, family-friendly recipes, and more. So go to HelloFresh.com slash Newsworthy90 and use code Newsworthy90 to get $90 off, including free shipping. Again, that's HelloFresh.com slash Newsworthy90 and use that code Newsworthy90 to get $90 off free shipping. All right, now back to the news. SpaceX is set to make history again this weekend. The private space company plans to launch four astronauts into orbit tomorrow from Florida's Kennedy Space Center. This is only the company's second crewed launch ever. Remember, its first was back in May with two astronauts on board, and that was the first time a private space company had ever launched humans into space, and the first time NASA astronauts launched from U.S. soil since 2011. That May launch was more of a test flight. Tomorrow's launch is part of an official mission to the International Space Station, and it'll help set in motion routine trips to the ISS. Three NASA astronauts will be on board. A Japanese astronaut is joining the journey as well. They'll all spend six months aboard the ISS doing research. For now, tomorrow's launch is set for 7.49 p.m. Eastern, as long as the weather cooperates. Either way, NASA and SpaceX are hoping for the best tomorrow, and they're preparing to stream the launch live. Nintendo is going old school. Starting today, the video game maker is re-releasing the first handheld gaming device it ever made, Game & Watch. It was sold throughout the 80s. Back then, users could play one or two simple games on it, and it also doubled as a clock, hence the name Game & Watch. Nintendo says it's bringing back a new modernized version of it to celebrate the 35th anniversary of the iconic franchise, Super Mario Bros. The new Game & Watch is supposed to be as simple as it was before, except it'll have a full-color LCD, and you can charge it with a USB cable. Beyoncé is partnering with the fitness company Peloton. The singer is working with the brand to create a series of workouts people can stream online. Her music and style will be featured in exercises like cycling, running, strength training, boot camp, yoga, and more. CNN says the first Beyoncé-themed workout class is live now, and more will be rolling out in the coming weeks. On top of that, students at 10 historically black colleges and universities will get free two-year digital memberships. They just have to sign up by the end of November. 
We now know the star of next year's Super Bowl halftime show, and it is the singer The Weeknd. The Weeknd is most known for songs like Blinding Lights, Starboy, and Can't Feel My Face, and he's already won three Grammy Awards. But this will definitely be a huge moment for the singer. The Weeknd says he's humbled, honored, and ecstatic for this opportunity. Super Bowl 55 is set for February 7th in Tampa, Florida. Tomorrow is Diwali, also known as the Hindu Festival of Lights. The holiday is celebrated by more than a billion people around the world. It started as a religious celebration, but USA Today says these days Indians of all faiths recognize Diwali. To commemorate the holiday, people light candles, firecrackers, and clay lamps to signify the triumph of light over darkness or good over evil. People usually gather for festivities too, but don't expect to see many large celebrations this year because of COVID-19. That said, people are getting creative and finding ways to honor the holiday virtually instead. And that's it for the main news today, but now it's time for Feel Good Friday, when we bring you one extra feel good or positive news story before the weekend. But first, a quick break to thank our sponsor, ButcherBox. So if you're like me, you're never sure which meats to buy at the grocery store to get the most for your money and to get high quality, humanely raised meat. That's why I'm here to recommend ButcherBox. They make it easy because I click the order and it shows up right at my door, packed fresh and shipped, frozen and vacuum sealed, so it stays that way. They help ensure I'm never without something in the freezer to cook. Each box has 9 to 11 pounds of meat, and I love that I can either customize my box or go with one of theirs. And I can skip a box anytime. Here's the best part, though. I know that everything I get from ButcherBox is free of antibiotics and added hormones. And they have great options like 100% grass-fed and finished beef, free-range organic chicken, and nitrate-free bacon. With ButcherBox, you get the highest quality meat around for just 6 bucks a meal. They even have free shipping nationwide except in Alaska and Hawaii. And right now, ButcherBox is offering new members a turkey for free in their first box. That's an entire turkey for free in your first box. Just go to butcherbox.com newsworthy. That's butcherbox.com newsworthy to grab that deal. And now back to Feel Good Friday. Today, the Friday after Veterans Day, we're talking about the Veterans Healing Farm. It was started by Air Force veteran John Mashi so that other veterans can volunteer and hopefully feel a sense of community. He tells People Magazine he got the idea after struggling with his own mental health issues. He battled feelings of loneliness and isolation, but found that when he was volunteering or helping other people, he felt better. So he turned nine acres of land in North Carolina into a farm where other veterans can volunteer and learn how to work the land. Mashi says there's a lot of benefits to this. For example, it gets them outdoors in the sunlight where they can get exercise. But more importantly, it gives them a sense of belonging and it lets them continue their military mission of service before self. Some veterans say this has been a game changer for them. The Veterans Healing Farm has done a ton of good in the community, too. In the last six years, it's donated more than 35,000 pounds of produce and flowers to other local veterans and their caregivers. All right, thank you so much for listening today. We'll be back with our special edition Saturday episode tomorrow and another news roundup on Monday. Until then, have a great day.